Let's start. Uh, the story begins in uh, June 2016 uh, when a 57-year-old lady who was a cigarette smoker, hypertensive, and also had a history of alcohol abuse. She was uh, on Ramipril 5 milligrams one, once daily for her hypertension. Uh, she came to the outpatient clinic because of uh, lifestyle limiting left, uh, left leg claudication with just 50 meter of pain free walking distance. So she underwent a duplex ultrasound and she was found to have a 15 centimeter long subocclusion of the mid segment of the left uh, superficial femoral artery. So a quite common picture. So the first question is, uh, which uh, treatment would you recommend for a lifestyle limiting claudication uh, with a duplex ultrasound finding of a long subocclusion of the SFA? So the first option, uh, you may recommend a medical treatment with a, an antiplatelet and statin. The patient is already on an ACE inhibitor, so uh, the medical treatment should consist of these three drugs. Or you may recommend medical treatment and exercise training, possibly supervised. Or you may uh, immediately proceed to endovascular revascularization, uh, which should be the first choice for a simple lesion, uh, on top, of course, of medical therapy. Or you could recommend both revascularization and exercise training. Oh, sorry, that was the last choice. So uh, raise your hands. How many would uh, recommend just medical therapy? So it's the first diagnosis of uh, life limiting, lifestyle limiting claudication. The patient is not taking medications. Nobody would go for medical therapy. Incredible. How many? No, because they, 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 all, they all will vote for number two. Number two is the right solution, so I help you, okay? No. Number two, exercise training plus medical therapy. Okay, I would say the majority. The third option. <laughs> Interventionists are not allowed to speak, okay? So my, I have to stop. I have to stop. <laughs> so the third, uh, apart from Eugenio, anybody would immediately go? No. Probably you are too polite. And, and finally, revascularization plus exercise training, of course, could be also an option if you decide to go uh, directly to revascularization. So... Um, Let's say that, uh, okay, f before proceeding to revascularization, if you will proceed, in any case, you start some antithrombotic treatment. So the first choice for claudication, aspirin low dose, clopidogrel, clopidogrel plus aspirin, that's an option, the dual antiplatelet therapy, the DAPTA, which was studied in the Charisma trial. The new uh, schema, the COMPASS scheme, that is rivaroxaban low dose, so-called vascular dose, 2.5 milligrams twice daily plus aspirin low dose. Or another option which was explored in the Euclid trial, ticagrelor, the Euclid trial was negative. Anyway, that's another theoretical option. There is no reimbursement for ticagrelor for this indication, so it's just to have number five. Number six is another theoretical option because vorapaxor is not available in the uh, in Europe, but it is available in the U.S. based on the TRA2P trial, uh, which showed some benefits, clinical benefits, uh, with this potent um, thrombin inhibitor uh, on top of aspirin or even of aspirin plus clopidogrel. The problem is that patients were more prone to bleeding, and therefore the, the application is very limited. So how many would vote for aspirin? Just one or two? Clopidogrel? Yes, definitely more. Uh, dual antiplatelet with clopidogrel and aspirin, very few. Rivaroxaban, many courageous people. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Um, as you know. I'm sorry, you are, talk you are talking about rivaroxaban from compact, but you don't have the practical. Yes, it was, it was approved by DMA for the European Medical Agency a few weeks ago, or just during the ES Congress. So it will take some time for the national agencies to approve it, but probably it will be a tool that will be available. Probably, I don't know if uh, the first diagnosis of uh, uh, claudication could be, maybe in the beginning at least, uh, the issue of costs uh, will, will prevail, but we, we have to wait for uh, the, the, the Voyager also trial and, and see if there is even more benefit. <laughs> 
Ticagrelor, I skipped it because it's <laughs> theoretical. You cannot prescribe it. Okay, anyone voting for Ticagrelor? Nobody, see? Yes? Can I make a comment? Yes, sure. Uh, just because there are many young in this, uh, this uh, hall, in this uh, room, uh, I would like to say how statisticians joke with the trial. If you look at the first meta-analysis on aspirin uh, in claudication, the results were negative, absolutely negative. The, the odds ratio was uh, overcome one. The second meta-analysis in 2000, only one trial was added to the previous one. The trial was uh, picotamide. Nobody knows. It is a, a, a drug which block, blocks thromboxane 2 and, um, and uh, thromboxane 2 receptors. Inclusion, sorry. Oh, yeah. Inclusion, this trial and the meta-analysis provide positive results. And this uh, was mutuated uh, on aspirin is effective. If, if you see the meta-analysis, all the, 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 the guideline suggests aspirin as a IA, 1A. Fist, 1A, sorry, a fist choice. This is a joke, okay? This is a joke. Please, look at what I, I have seen, because the trial with the bicotomand has been done by myself. So be careful uh, with the guideline, because, because uh, just in this case, there's no, no data supporting the use of aspirin in claudication. Sorry, but... Uh, uh, um, uh, You're touchy on this issue, okay. <laughs> we got it. We found a new role for the vice president. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so what, what I did was, I, I said the patient stopped smoking, was very convincing. Stop drinking alcohol, even more convincing. And I started clopidogrel and atorvastatin, 40 milligrams once daily. And I recommended to walk because uh, unfortunately uh, we don't have any supervised exercise uh, facility or anything like that. So you just say to the patient, you should walk. The more you work, the, 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 the better you will feel and so on. Of course, the patient does nothing. And oh, I say of course, but I mean, she was an alcoholist, so it's unlikely that she would uh, take my uh, advice. And she continues smoking, drinking, and I don't even know if she's taking the, the pills, actually. So that's a reason not to intervene in a patient who doesn't take the pills, because, of course, you can have complications if the patient is revascularized, but it's very difficult to be sure, because the patient says, yes, I take all the medications. Then you speak to the daughter and then say, I don't know if she takes them. So uh, again, we, we performed a new uh, ultrasound and now she has a even longer and practically occluded uh, left SFA. So the, the third question is, uh, uh, if conservative therapy fails, what is the treatment for lifestyle limiting claudication? First option, it was not failure of therapy, it was failure of adherence to therapy. So we should send back the patient and say, okay, stop smoking and come back when you uh, we'll demonstrate that. The other option now, uh, conservative therapy has failed. Now we should go uh, again for a, a further exercise training, or we should go to SFA revascularization, or SFA revascularization plus training. So number one, we are not in the UK. Nobody from the UK. So. <laughs> Uh, her daughter brings the, the, the cigarettes to the mother. So the second option, who would insist on supervised training? Uh, of course, supervised training we will hear later. Uh, it's, a, it's a good option, but we need to make sure that patient actually exercises. Now, revascularization, nobody. Okay. <laughs> and revascularization plus exercise, please vote. Okay, thank you. It's not compliant. So we just balloon it, okay? Don't no. put a stamp. No. <laughs> yes, we balloon it because she deserves being opened up. So I'll show you quickly the slides. So this is the beginning of the story. You see here that's, yeah, that's the uh, origin of the um, SFA, which is diseased, uh, diffusely diseased. That's the profunda femoris, which is, of course, very nice. 
she should work, but she doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So uh, you see also already in the, in the second picture, there is already the wire going down, which means that the, the vessel was not closed, it was actually sub-occluded. And here you see one nice vessel that uh, comes from the profunda to the superficial, and those are very important. I will not uh, indulge in the details of revascularization, but this is very important that when you do revascularization, you preserve all the collateral flow. That's why I'm very keen on revascularization using intraluminal um, reopening and not uh, uh, doing dissection and closing all collaterals. So we did uh, ballooning with a gentle balloon. The result was somewhat nice. There was still here uh, some problem. Uh, I went up to a five millimeter balloon, which should be the right choice for, uh, for this lady who was very thin. There was some dissection. Anyway, the result was not so bad. This is the final um, shot on the proximal SFA, which I did not touch. There is the disease and it decided to stop there. Okay, now we have done PTA, standard PTA with a simple balloon. What would be your recommendation for antithrombotic treatment? First option, single antiplatelet, because no stent implanted, with either clopidogrel or aspirin. The second, dual aspirin and clopidogrel for one month, which is the standard for stents, actually. Or you would go even longer, because the patient has diffuse disease. So even longer, I mean, up to six months of uh, double antiplatelet therapy or uh, even long-term double antiplatelet therapy, because the patient, unless the patient has high bleeding risk, but she's alcoholic, uh, alcoholist, so, I mean, uh, cont uh, contraindication. Or finally, now, after revascularization, we, you will go for rivaroxaban plus aspirin. So, aspirin only, nobody. One month dual antiplatelet, okay, the majority, I would say. Th up to six months, nobody. Why? Uh, long, uh, long term, dual, nobody. Okay. And rivaroxaban? Someone? Okay. So, uh, most of you would go with uh, uh, dual for one month. And, uh, I uh, uh, usually give uh, dual for six months. Uh, the patient was not taking the pills, so I, mean, I could uh, <laughs> advise to take it lifelong. She would have uh, never taken any pill. So, uh, anyway, she, uh, she did uh, her first uh, uh, follow-up duplex ultrasound. Maybe, Muriel, you can uh, comment on the assessment of uh, patients after revascularization. Anyway, uh, the first uh, Doppler ultrasound was not bad, but uh, she came back one year later, and now uh, she was again uh, complaining of, uh, of severe claudication, and we did a second uh, intervention, I'll show you. Here is the proximal SFA. Uh, the disease has somewhat progressed, but it doesn't look very different from what it used to be. The problem is that now it's completely occluded and there is no, certainly no uh, vessel and it, the occlusion is much tougher than it was. Here are the uh, two points uh, for the collateral circulation. So those were preserved, fortunately. So I, um, what we did uh, was to uh, cross uh, intraluminally, as I said before. It's very uh, time-consuming to, to, to remain intraluminal. You have to check whether you are heading in the right direction. You see there are some calcifications, but not that, that severe. And finally, um, that's the most gratifying moment when you see the wire that bumps into the true lumen. Hopefully, you see that the wire goes down. You, you double check that the wire is in the right position, you dilate, it takes a, long, a lot of time. After the dilation, the result was not very nice. So we went with a larger balloon, a five millimeter balloon, and here I put, sorry, I went too fast. Here I put a drug the balloon in the distal and proximal SFA because uh, I wanted to make sure that this time the patient had not uh, a recurrence. This is the result after um, the implantation of drug-eluting, uh, drug-coated balloons. So you see there is some disease here, there is a dissection here, and here there is a stenosis. And so it ended up with a stent. And two stents, uh, two stents overlapping stents, uh, a six by 150 and a five by 150, going uh, near to the proximal uh, SFA, by, but I did not cover the ostium of SFA because I was 
uh, worried about the risk of thrombosis and maybe of occluding the uh, profunda femoris. I post dilated the stent, and this was the final result. So there is the disease here. <laughs> she is not a candidate for surgery, you know. Okay, I, 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 I double checked the origin of the SFA was not too diseased, and I said, okay, let, let's see how, how, how it behaves. And uh, as of today, I've not done a third intervention. So the final question is uh, following stent implantation, what would you recommend? DAPT uh, for one month, DAPT for six months, DAPT long term, because this is a, a failure of the first revascularization, or rivaroxaban plus aspirin. So, first option, DAPT for one month after stenting, nitinol stent, okay. DAPT for th six months, the majority, DAPT long term, nobody, and rivaroxaban plus aspirin. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see. Following, yeah, you may, you may progress. I agree with Victor because we do, not have the, the voyage, we do not have the voyage data right now, so this is an unfair multiple yeah. choice question. We'll hear more 